Hi guys, we're joined here today by Dylan Taylor. He's just one of those wonderful lawyers that is going to help us clarify some of the ideas with Bill 44. Dylan works with Dawson Mullen Law. Um, and uh, yeah, we're super happy to have you today and just cover some of those uh, those topics. It's a pretty loaded agenda we've got, but uh, I'm glad that we'll parse that through together. Yeah, awesome. I'm excited. One of the things that I want to start with uh, today is uh, the idea of um, discussing the background. How does this happen? Uh, I understand that it was an extremely rush kind of um, scenario. Uh, the government, I think it passed in th about three days? Yeah, three days to rural assent, which is pretty unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, these days it takes like forever to pass any legislation and for some reason this was passed, you know, so quickly. So um, what are your thoughts on it? the particular, I mean, I know there's a housing crisis and, and, and David Eby did mention the fact that he was going to do this, you know, to, uh, we just didn't know how and exactly when. Now we have found out that this is actually in effect, right? Because the law is, is in effect as of today. Yeah, I mean, push through in three days, you don't typically see that at all with uh, legislation just because there's so many steps that it needs to go through, multiple readings, some debate on it. It was shocking to me because I got a whole bunch of phone calls like, hey, Dylan, when do you think that this bill is actually going to come into effect? And my usual answer is, oh, you know, well, maybe we should make these these contracts subject to and we'll get into that. But um but three days and we got the, the notice and that was just unbelievable. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Um, because uh, for sure, I mean, we can acknowledge that we're missing a lot of the uh, the rental stock. Our, our vacancy rates overall in Victoria have been always really low. I mean, you know, we're lucky if we're hovering around like 1% or 1.5. Sometimes we've seen far below that. So it's needed and that could be seen as a tool. But I want to talk about the, the overall background. The big surprise to us was also dealing with the age restrictions uh, that, that was also kind of built into this uh, Bill 44. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and I think getting into your point there about about uh, the need for this to happen. I, you know, there's gonna be political underpinnings of everything that David Eby jumps in and makes a huge change right away. Um, you know, regardless of that, there is a, a crisis and the hope is that this is gonna open up the door to more rentals and more people are gonna be able to find places to live at. You know, and hopefully that impacts affordability too. Yeah, 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 exactly. So um, I want to uh, just delve right into it and and um, see. Okay, what is really the the this bill entail? We have this, this new statute that amends the Strata Property Act as to what stratas actually can regulate now versus what they could earlier. Um, so let's let's. Uh, so there's I understand there's two elements essentially to this, right? There's the uh, the uh, rental restrictions with, which have been uh, essentially taken away. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll delve into the age restrictions because they both have their own intricacies and, and their own issues that, that uh, I think the public should be made aware of. Uh, one of my, from my perspective, you know, in the real estate industry is where I'm seeing there's a lot of misunderstandings and some of these misunderstandings have been kind of propagated through social media and the press as well. So maybe we can address that as well. So let's yeah. maybe start with the, the rental restriction. Yeah, I think we, we start with that, that one first, the, uh, the importance that they've now pulled the rental restrictions and subject to it will probably talk about the short-term rentals um, because that is still uh, it's on a blanket no rent you're, you're allowed rentals whenever you want because we still have to talk about the, the short-term rentals but um, yeah so in a and they kind of go hand in hand but you can no longer um, restrict rentals in right. buildings um, subject to the 55 plus right um, so basically sure. any strata in British Columbia right now yeah. uh, had, does not have the ability to say to somebody sorry you're 20 years old you're not allowed to live in the strata unless they have the exception which would be if they're a really specific 55 plus strata is that correct yeah yeah, yeah. that's right yeah yeah so yeah you can't you can no longer restrict it on the basis of, of anything and um, yeah that's what that's doing. interesting so essentially there's two it creates two sets of communities, basically the communities that have, have uh, you know, um, um, the, the no age restrictions and the ones that do, right? Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, and then there, you know, and even if there is bylaws that are, that are out there that now say, hey, you can't, 
you can't rent out this building, um, mm -hmm. those will just become automatically null and void. They're not of any force. Right. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit too, because one of the, the, the myths that was propagated is the fact that, uh, and we've I've actually been contacted by different council members of, of Stratas, um, and their approach is, well, why don't we just uh, pass a bylaw, change the entire building to 55 plus, and that way we are not subjected to those rental restrictions. Is that accurate? Kind of. So, so when you, yeah, so there seems to be a push now to say, okay, well, they're allowing kind of this loophole, I'll say that, you know, 55 plus, we can, we can restrict um, and have some restrictions in place. So let's move our building to 55 plus. Well, that's not necessarily going to be the, the case. You need to take a look at, you know, how the bylaws are structured, what exactly they say, um, because it would be that occupants is the key word there that need to be 55 plus and it's not technically a restriction on, on that it's that you're not 55 plus you can't live there um, and you need to be very clear is that everyone in the household is that just one person needs to be 55 plus mm -hmm. right so um, and then there's and we can get into it a bit but there's a, uh, a carve out as well for caregivers right so yeah so and, then and that, that creates another whole set of questions because the definition of caregiver and is also one that, you know, is that very clearly defined or could that be a teenager? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's exactly it. And it, it's not it's not narrowly defined because they want to capture a whole bunch of different people. But in doing so, it leaves a lot of ambiguity and uh, for lawyers to make strong arguments uh, mm -hmm. that someone is a caregiver. And, you know, do you need to be a actual that needs to be like your role, your job, or can you be a caregiver without actually having a formal credit, like um, credits for that, right? Right, right. Yeah. So essentially, uh, a strata cannot uh, regulate any rentals, except if it's a strata that's 55 plus, basically can say, well, we can't prohibit the rental, but you must, as an occupant, be 55, right? Yeah. Or, or over. So that's basically the loophole that you're talking about. Yeah, that's what they're, yeah, that is what they're trying to accomplish with that. Is okay. That, um, and and that gets into a little bit of human rights as well yeah right and uh, i know the human rights code itself the bc human rights code has a carve out that you know if it if an act like you're not breaching um human rights in the event that it's expressly defined in an act and or a piece of legislation um and that's what the property uh the strata property act does mm -hmm. is that it says you know it's not a violation of human rights and you can restrict bases on 55 plus right right because mm -hmm. i mean from our experience so for example our company is uh does offer rental property management as well mm -hmm. and one of the things that we've seen over the years um because prior, I think it was in 2010, there was an amendment to the Strata Property Act uh, that kind of defined also a little bit of the uh, the age criteria. Um, but the uh, further change to the Residential Tenancy Act in that now there's no more vacate clauses allowed, right? Uh, uh, at least would roll over a month to month. What we find frequently are stratas that have bylaws that prohibit the owners to rent that um, that unit for more, let's say, than two years. Mm -hmm. So what occurs is that very likely you can have a tenant that, well, they have a lease of two years, but they want to stay. You are not allowed to kick them out because that's really their residential tenancy act, and it's now completely at odds with that Stratus bylaws. Yeah. Uh, so I can see how that brings that a bit more in line, but mm -hmm. you know, it creates, I guess, this other series of issues. Yeah. Yeah, because there, and there's that section within the the Strata uh, Property Act that says you can't look into uh, the tenancy agreement. You can't have them insert clauses into your your tenancy agreement, right? So you can't control the tenancy in any way, um, which is kind of at odds with the 55 plus thing. So that's interesting. So Strata cannot look into the lease agreement. Yeah, that's right. Interesting yeah. because we see a lot of Stratas asking us for a copy of the, the yeah. lease agreement. Yeah, and I mean they can have a copy just so they know who the person is and maybe who the parties are, right? For okay. sure. But um, they can't go in there and say, "Hey, you need to insert this clause into every single mm -hmm. um, a, a lease agreement or a tenancy agreement." So it'll be really interesting to kind of see how this evolves, and I guess we you know it'll take some time for everything to to have you know for us to have a really clear p picture as to what are the after effects of this law. So another aspect of uh, these rental restrictions is that because it opens up, you know, the uh, the rental as a whole, what's really not talked about too much. So can I still have my Airbnb or can I now have an Airbnb that that short term rental? Uh, has that changed? 
Yeah, um, well, those are still going to be restricted, right? And and the court, and when I say court, I'm talking about the Civil uh, Resolution Tribunal. They're very, very clear that this isn't a short-term rental, is not creating um, a tenancy. Okay. So it's it's it has nothing to do with the Residential Tenancy Act. It's not creating that. What they are is their licensees. They're, you're basically giving them a license. They can go in there, you know, similar to a hotel. We don't have any rights over a, a hotel. We go in there, we stay, we leave, right? Yeah. We have no ownership. There's no, you know, you can't stay in there and be like, now I'm a tenant. Yeah, I'm you can't stay in month to month now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, month to month, I'm just going to stay I'll be at the right? pure hotel. and uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah, so, um, so that is uh, still going to be banned. Okay. Um, it can sorry it can be banned by the strata um so you're going to want to take a look and see how that is because if you're you're coming over and and you know you want to say i'm buying in victoria i'm going to run an airbnb and this is where i'm buying well you know you need to be careful and you need to do your due diligence to make sure that you can do so yeah um and that's going beyond just the strata documents itself it could be a municipal thing right a lot of municipal bylaws yeah yeah, yeah. or it even could be um, a covenant on title, right? That yeah. says, yeah, no, no Airbnbs are allowed. So you could be buying this. You know, it could be a house. Even you're buying a house. There's this covenant on title, and it says no Airbnbs. Well, you can't do so. Yeah. So you yeah. want to be uh, extra cautious with because that. Because the short term, uh, we call it a short term rental, but the uh, idea of the rental is really more. It's it's getting more into the commercial activity yeah. almost, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, short term accommodations might yeah. be better, and there's also. Unless it's defined, what does short term mean? Does it mean less than thirty days? A lot of bylaws will say that, but yeah. you could define it in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it could be less than two weeks, could be a couple of days. It, it all sort of depends on what, yeah. what it is. Yeah, because that's also sometimes, and I discourage uh, people to uh, to you know make assumptions. And again, getting great uh, you know legal uh, advice on that as to what constitutes that short term, because we get that so often as to well, you know, if I do this for so many days, then it's still a short term rental. It doesn't fall within the um, the Residential Tenancy Act, uh, or or if it's so many days, then it's not a short term. And I don't think it's as, as black and white as people think. It's not that there's not that exact day formula. At least we didn't see that in that uh, Bill of 44. It's not stipulated there. Yeah, no, no. And they, you know, it seems like they could have taken that opportunity to clarify things too. Yeah. Um, and they could have, you know, because the way law works is legislation supreme and common law, right? So mm. the legislation sets it out and then the common law kind of fills in the, the bones, so right. to speak. Yeah. Um, they had an opportunity there to be very clear on exactly what short-term rentals mean, short-term accommodations mean, whether you can do it, can't. Um, because some municipalities are just absolutely silent on it. You know, some are say it's 30 days, others don't. So yeah. you want to yeah, uh, do as much uh, due diligence to speak with your lawyer, um, and yeah, and read those strata documents. Yeah, get that sorted out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, especially if you're if you're motivated to do so, like if that's what you want to do, yeah. then you need to make sure you can do it. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, we have heard through you know through your industry uh, that a number of stratas are applying in a rush, you know, filing for changing the strata to fifty five plus. Now, my main worry is that was there any. Um, diligence done on the strata side as to yes but what are the effects of being 55 plus um, for instance we do know on the financial side of things uh, a lot of lenders do not like to lend as easily especially now that you know the market has changed and we are in a much more conservative lending uh, approach you know they're not as risk takers as they used to be a couple of years ago so when there's a 55 plus you know, uh, could that really create a loss of value for those strata owners just because now they've moved over to that 55 uh, plus portion? So mm -hmm. that's what I wonder if, you've, you know, if that we're going to see a bit of that. Yeah, and I think that that may be the case. Um, it, it seems as though a, a direct move to 55 plus when you weren't otherwise one would be kind of a, a, a knee jerk reaction to this. Mm -hmm. We've got to do yeah. something. We need to stop this right away, you know, and. It's like, uh, you know, I don't know, I want to use the terminology like seeing red. You know, when you yeah. see red, sometimes you get hit from behind in hawk here or something like that. Yeah. You see red, you just don't care what happens next. Yeah. Not maybe, and you just do it versus... You, you just want to react to what happened, right? You don't let you don't let a second to let it seep in and just, you know, see how this is going to work in practice before engaging uh, a lawyer to, to rewrite your bylaws or doing it yourself, mm -hmm. right? Because there's no... There's no, there's no, no one saying that they can't write the bylaw themselves. Just do it, and don't yeah. even get a lawyer and just say, "Hey, now we're 55 plus." The ramification of that might have an exact opposite effect of what the the government 
wanted to do and is that going to lead to more government intervention yeah right? exactly which is, which, which is um yeah not always the easiest i mean i guess they can get things through in three days but yeah <laughs> um, generally speaking it, it usually takes a bit in practice right mm-hmm. you see you introduce this new piece of legislation you see how it works it works through the uh civil uh, the civil tribunal for a while to see how it's going to work and then you make adjustments based on that but so uh, maybe we're going to see some further amendments over time yeah like yeah and, and potential challenges to this you know human rights uh cutout that there is mm-hmm. because you know now all of these buildings are like that's a distinct um basis uh distinction on on age right yeah. you're saying if you're under 55 you know dylan you're 30 years old you can no longer you can't live here right well and the concern that i have especially uh, i mean we have seen it in prior legislative moves that are quick you know where um some of the the ideology behind that that strategic move and then change in statute uh seems to be sound overall but the uh, speed of which uh, at which it's ratified and and you know given royal assent leaves uh, the people that are stuck in the middle in the in the middle of the transaction let's say a little bit uh, you know uh, astray and so my worry is let's say you know you have a couple that are expecting you know and um, they are now you know we're now under the new statute and their strata passes a 55 plus bylaw um, those people who uh, are, let's say, mid-transaction, it hasn't closed yet, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden it closes, and uh, what happens to those people? Oh, I, yeah, I mean, I, there's going to be some, some arguments based on that, and, you know, if she's actually pregnant at the time, when is the baby truly a... You, you could get into all sorts oh, God. of arguments. Oh, God, yeah, we're, we're, that, we're right? starting but, into, like, you know, yeah. it's the start of life. Well, yeah. exactly, right? So, you know, you're going to be grandfathered in. You get in prior to these changes, then you're grandfathered in, and they can't kick you out based on that mm-hmm. until you have the kid. But then there's that argument of, you know, is it when was it... Yeah, all sorts of different things, right? Yeah. Conceived yeah. in everything. Um, so I think in that particular instance, you know, if... Yeah, it just sort of depends on the situation because um, there is the the grandfathering, for lack of a better term, I think. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, no, no guarantee on uh, on what's going to happen, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so from what we're seeing in the field, for sure, and as uh, as an industry, you know, what uh, we're moving towards to is the recognition that you know now more than ever when you're dealing, especially with a complex transaction that involves a strata. You know, getting that outside piece, that counsel, that legal counsel, before we find ourselves in a position where there's an unconditional offer, which makes it, you know, very difficult to back out from, um, to really get that that legal counsel as to how does the statute even apply to me, to the transaction, to this particular strata. Um, That's, I mean, if you can, you know, speak a little bit to that as to, you know, you know, being some guidance to to uh, not just maybe just only buyers, but also sellers as to you know what they have to face. Yeah, and whether the that would expose the seller to any liability on that. I think, you know, I, I buyer beware is yeah. is a thing. Um, you're gonna want to pull the strata documents. You're gonna want to check out the minutes. You're gonna want to see if they're having any special resolutions that they're trying to pass this new um, 55 plus movement. Yeah. Um, especially if you are a younger family that is you know planning on maybe expecting in yeah in exactly. shortly within the year or even a couple of years from now because yeah if you have a child and you're 55 plus and you're yeah you're hooped you gotta leave yeah because I, I mean from my perspective really hope we don't have this massive influx of uh of uh, you know changes to the 55 plus because mm-hmm. Victoria uh, or the CRD as a whole has already a number of uh, you know historically number of stratas that had age restrictions yeah. and they weren't all 55 plus you know we had a lot of 19 plus we just don't want to have any kids in our complex yeah. uh, we had you know 45 plus um, if those all transit to 55 plus you know what is there left for you know first time home buyers younger buyers that are already finding it very very difficult in this market to get in to have one more piece you know to to make it more difficult so mm-hmm. yeah that's exactly it so perhaps um the government b- would be willing to make a carve out in their piece of legislation for if you're in there um and you have a child you have children then maybe you can stay mm-hmm. right it would be pretty easy for them to do that and especially if you know 
they're getting some blowback on that. Yeah. Then, then maybe there's time for more governmental intervention. Now, do you, do you see, and I'm just, you know, obviously nobody yeah. has a crystal ball, but do you think that if there is enough of that, you know, utilizing that loophole, if you will, of the 55 plus, do you think there's a chance the government might say, hey, maybe we'll take the 55 plus exemption out and, and just have no age restrictions either? Is that a possibility, you think, or, or unlikely? Yeah, it's probably unlikely, but I would never, never say never, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, and, and we don't want this to become a political thing, but everything is politically driven, so you're going to make decisions based on keeping your, your party in power and stuff. Mm -hmm. And if there's enough of, you know, hype around that to, to, to keep that around, then that may be something that they, they do. Um, there could also be blowback as, you know, if, if it becomes a human rights movement that, you know, that you're restricting based on age and you're discriminating based on age. Mm. And, and now there's, you know, Half of I'm being silly, but half of the stratas are now 55 plus. Well, that's not going to work. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, you know, so we've touched on on the uh, basically the change, which is a, those are huge changes, right? We're we're changing the legislation in terms of uh, whether a strata can uh, really have their say, you know, whether you can rent your strata lot or not. And then also uh, as to how we uh, how they can regulate the uh, age restrictions. So um, I think now more than ever uh, there is a, a need for that due diligence. Now coming January, obviously, and we'll talk a bit more about that later um, in our next video. Um, we're talking about the uh, rescission right period uh, will be in effect coming this January of 23. So that's another big piece. Um, but even with that rescission period, you know. Um, having that level of um, advice, you know, outside legal counsel um, in coordination with, you know, a, a good uh, real estate professional that can navigate you through that transaction, making sure that you have all the due diligence, you have the time to breathe and research. What am I getting into? Is that the product? Is that the type of place I want to live in? And what does it look like for me as an investment and as, a, as my personal home? So mm -hmm. uh, thanks Dylan for being here today and filling yeah, some of those blanks for us. It's, uh, yeah. it's uh, you know, there's a lot of catch up for us to do all because it was passed so quickly to kind of figure out how does this even work. And I'm sure there'll be a lot more learning as we go forward with this. But uh, yeah, yeah I appreciate your time today. Yeah, thanks, yeah, thanks for having me. It's been great. Cool.